What is your name, please? My name is Peter Wilson. What is your name, please? My name is Peter Wilson. What is your name, please? My name is Peter Wilson. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Peter Wilson and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Camel Cigarettes. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Then, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Next, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, star of next week's United States Steel show, Miss Polly Bergen. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Trumpet Corporal Peter Wilson, am a member of the British Royal Horse Guards. Our regiment, which is 300 years old, is part of the household cavalry. As a state trumpeter, my duties include playing at official functions such as the coronation, trooping the colors, the opening of Parliament by the Queen, and for state visits of foreign dignitaries. I am here, along with 500 other men of the armed forces, in the British Military Tournament and Tattoo, which is currently playing Madison Square Garden in New York. Signed, Peter Wilson. <laughs> Incidentally, all profits from the British Tattoo will go to American and British service charities. All right, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Peter Wilson, Corporal in the Royal Horse Guards. Let's begin this first round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Um, number one, what kind of trumpets were used at, at Princess Margaret's wedding? State trumpets. What were they made of? Solid silver. Uh, number two, what color are the Queen's trousers when she rides in the Trooping of the Colors? Queen's trousers? The Queen wears a skirt on the Trooping of the Colors. And you never see what the color of the trousers color. are underneath? No. <laughs> well, I mean, when you wear a skirt, you also wear trousers, don't you? It was not disrespectful. Side saddle, man. Side saddle. No trousers. No trousers. <laughs> um, can you tell me where they trained to, for this magnificent performance, which unfortunately I haven't seen at the garden? Where did the soldiers train for the tattoo? Which number? Prim number three. Oh. Primarily in the barracks at Knightsbridge. <laughs> Don Amici, please. Uh, number uh, two, what would be the average age of the horses that are used in this uh, troop? The average age of the horses used in London, you mean? Yes. In London, range from about uh, six years upward to 12 years. Number three, what, uh, what would be the, uh, 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 not, <laughs> would they be uh, uh, mares or would they be geldings or would they be uh, horses? They're Most mares. I beg your pardon? They're mares, sir. They're German graves. All? Yes. Uh, number two, or number one, what, uh, what kind of shoes are worn on these horses? Steel shoes. Would, would... Polly Bergen? Thank you, bud. Um, number three, uh, I read in the paper or magazine something that they had a little bit of trouble at Madison Square Garden with um, some of the girls who were working in some of the pubs, uh, the, uh, sort of the, uh, to look like one of the English pubs at the garden, and I wonder if you could tell me what that difficulty was. I've heard nothing at all about that. We had a little difficulty with the signal corps. There was a slight accident during the... I don't know room. about that, though. <laughs> uh, number two, do you know anything about the incident that I know about? No, no, no. Number one, do you? Not a thing. Well, what about your incident, sir? Tom Post. <laughs> Gosh, I'm interested in Polly's incident, It was too. very <laughs> interesting, really, because they, 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 these Tom. bar girls got uh, fired. Let me ask number... Uh, Number three. Got what? They got fired. Please, let's discuss this choice little tidbit later. Number Actually, what happened, Tom, ask a few questions. is that they found that they Tom. couldn't serve the people. <laughs> you care to ask oh. some questions, Tom? That's so rude to interrupt. Isn't it, Tom? Sorry. <laughs> uh, number three, does a horse have an elbow? <laughs> no, sir, it has, it has three sides. Uh, it has three parts. It has the withers, the middle, and the hind part. Well, uh, do you agree with that, number one? 
I do indeed. Does, uh, number one, does a horse have an arm? No. Number two, do you agree with either of these other two fellows? I'm afraid that's all the time we have. And if you ever see a horse bending an elbow, you better send for somebody right away. <laughs> send one of Polly's bar girls. <laughs> it's time to vote. Will you please mark your ballots? And as you do so, of course, you will vote for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody through marking and voting? If so, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. There was something... So <laughs> Somebody agreed with me. Uh, there was uh, something about the straightforward way in which he answered that I found very refreshing and confusing. <laughs> Kitty, which one got your vote? I voted for number one. He said that the trumpets were solid silver with real pride, and although number three said the barracks in Knightsbridge, and I believe that's where the barracks are, it's probably number two. <laughs> Don, your ballot. I voted for number one, and I oh. wish I could tell you that I have a real good reason for doing it, but I don't. <laughs> and Polly. <laughs> uh, Polly. I voted for number two because I had a strong feeling everyone else was going to vote for number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. Good sound reasoning. All right, our ballots are in. You know how we voted, and if you're voting at home, as we always hope you are, let's compare notes now as we find out in our own particular moment of truth which one of these gentlemen is the real corporal in the Royal Horse Guard. Will the real Peter Wilson please stand up? a very special treat for you. Direct from the British tattoo, the Royal Horse Guard State Trumpeters, including Trump Trumpeter Corporal uh, Peter Wilson, have kindly consented to give us a small sample of their performance over there at Madison Square Garden. So ladies and gentlemen, we have here for you now the State Trumpeters. make your blood tingle that will, won't it? Yeah. All right, that's thrilling. Well, you two gentlemen sort of left out here, but one of you garnered most of the votes. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Jeffrey Poolman. I work for Rolls-Royce, and I'm here at the British Exhibition. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, the same information about you, please. My name is Alex Pandy, and I sell securities for Goldman Sachs and Company. Thank you, sir. <laughs> And uh, you did very well, because only one of our panel, as you can see, voted correctly. That means three incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $750. Can you tell the good corporal the good news when you meet him backstage? And, of course, a carton of Camel cigarettes for each of you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good night, and good, good luck night. to you. Thank you. Now imagine, if you will, that I'm dressed in a complete Western outfit, including my trusty gun. Looks like the beginning of a Western, doesn't it? Well, now, how about this? Now, panel, may I present our next team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Robert Hill. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Hill. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Hill. Follow along once again, panel, will you, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Robert Hill, live in Naples, Italy, where my father is stationed as a staff sergeant in the United States Air Force. Last year, I read a book about Dr. Albert Schweitzer. I was so impressed by his work in Africa that I decided to help by collecting medical supplies for him. 
I wrote to our base commander and went on the radio in Naples suggesting a collection campaign. In two weeks, we collected $400,000 worth of medicine and supplies. The Italian and French governments each provided an airplane and the material was flown to Africa. I went along and was personally thanked by Dr. Schweitzer. Last week at the White House in Washington, D.C., I was presented with a citation for my contribution to President Eisenhower's People to People program, signed Robert Hill. Panel, three fine young boys here who each claim to be uh, Robert Hill, who helped Dr. Schweitzer. Let's start this round of cross-examination with Tom Poston, Tom. Thank you, Bud. Uh, I'll ask uh, number three, please. How many stripes does a staff sergeant have? Four. Uh, number two, how do they look on the sleeve? Oh, they're shaped V-shaped. And how do the four arrange themselves, number two, please? Uh, they're one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number one, can you tell me, uh, in Naples, do you know Naples well, number one? Not very well. Number two, do you? Uh, not too well either. Uh, number one, where is Montvecchio? Do you know? No. <laughs> I guess he told me that, all right. <laughs> uh, tell me, number three, who assisted you in this country, please? Number three? Robert uh, Hill. In doing what? In uh, getting these supplies uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Schweitzer. Um, no one in this country. Pity. Number... <laughs> Kitty? Uh, number one, uh, can you tell me what town uh, Dr. Schweitzer lives in? In Africa? Yes. Uh, Lamborghini. Uh, number two, uh, what does he play? Oh, he plays the organ. Um, number three, by whom were you uh, given the citation? By the president's assistant. Um, I believe his name was... Marion. Can you remember his name, number one? I think it was Mr. Robert Marion. Uh, Don Amici, please. Number uh, uh, two, how far away is Pompeii from Naples? Oh, I don't know. Uh, number three, uh, how long did you live, have you lived in Naples? For approximately two years. Uh, number one, what gangster is stationed there in, uh, or is, is there in... Uh... <laughs> Between your gangsters and my barmaids, they're going to be thrown right off the air. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure you don't mean it's Wait, don't there, know. do you? Pardon me? I don't know. Number two, would you have any idea? I believe it, I believe it is uh, uh, Luciano. Uh, number three, what, uh, what is the other popular island uh, uh, other than Capri? Uh, Mount Vesuvius. Uh, no. Ollie? Number two. Number one, what is the other island besides Capri? I don't know. Number two, do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. Um, let's see, was it number, number two, did, did, how long have you been in Naples? I've been in Naples for two years. Uh, how far away from Naples is Pompeii? Oh, I don't know. Would you know number three? No. Uh, number, number one, uh, did you collect, was this money all sent, the money you collected, $400,000, was it all sent to you or was it uh, sent to a collection agency? In other words, did you have all the money? Uh, no, I didn't have the money. It was sent to the office, I mean, a post, an officer on the post. In the an officer on the post. Well, that's all the time we have for any further questions, so it's time for you to mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel, without consultation. Mark them and vote for number one. Number two, or number three? Everybody votes? No. Get the mark as quickly as we can. Everybody voted now? Okay. Uh, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, Bud, first, if I may, I'd like to say that I think it's a glorious thing that happened. Uh, I, if we didn't help in it in any way, I really am sorry. However, I think we did. I know that Jackie Robinson had some nice things to say about it. I didn't ask any of the uh, other two boys about this, but I did vote for number two because I, I liked his answers. And uh, whoever it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of work. Uh... Thank you, Tom. You speak for all of us.
Kitty, your vote. Here, here, Tom, for all of us. Yeah. I voted for number one. He seemed very clear in his answers. He said Lamborghini, and he said Mr. Robert Marion had given him the citation, and I think he answered more clearly than the others. Don, your vote. I voted for number two. Uh, he was the only one that seemed to know about our... Uh, importation over there called Mr. Luciano. So I, <laughs> I think most Station anyone that lives in Naples knows about him. <laughs> Polly, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number one. Uh, I guess we girls are sticking together tonight. Uh, I, I had a, I was led toward number two. I thought that his answers were, were wonderful, but I had a hunch about number one, really. He's very quiet, and my nurse says that's who it usually is. All right. <laughs> Let's find out now whether she's right this time as we discover which one of these young men is the real young man who helped Dr. Albert Schweitzer so very nobly. Will the real Robert Hill please stand up? Thank you very much, son, and congratulations to you. It was a wonderful thing you did. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name? You can sit down if you will, sir. Uh, what your real name is and what you really do, please? Well, my name is Jesse Zachary, and I'm a student at Rhodes Preparatory School here in New York City. Thank you, sir. And number three, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is Jack Robinson, and I'm a student at Dolan Junior High School in Stanford, Connecticut. My recollection, there is a uh, rather famous Jackie Robinson who lives in Stamford, Connecticut. Any relation to you? Yes, sir. So who is he? My father. He's your father. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can miss it. You look at him, he's a fit image of his dad. Well, it's proud. wonderful because Tom yeah, mentioned Jackie. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure uh, that I read it in Jackie's column about well, that. I'm sure you did, too. Don't you read your dad's like column? <laughs> Don't put him on his spot. That's not fair. Let's check up here and see what we have. We had exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Camel Cigarettes. Young man, that's not bad for an evening's pleasure, and we trust you had just that. Thanks for being with us. Good night. God bless you. Have you ever fired one of these things? Because if you have, you know how tough it is to hit anything. Well, here's a man who is a real marksman. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Link Luckett. What is your name, please? My name is Link Luckett. What is your name, please? My name is Link Luckett. Again, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Link Luckett, live and work in Alaska. I am a helicopter pilot. Last month, I participated in the now famous rescue of a group of injured mountain climbers from the 18,000-foot level of Mount McKinley. To enable my helicopter to reach that altitude, I took on only 12 gallons of gas and removed the battery, the radio, and even one door from my ship. I flew with a tube from an oxygen tank in my mouth. The six landings and takeoffs I made on the mountain were the highest ever made by man in any type of aircraft. Signed, Link Luckett. <laughs> and here we have, as you heard and have judged for yourselves, three stalwart gentlemen, each one claiming to be Link Luckett, helicopter hero pilots. And we start this round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Well, first of all, we have a lot of very courageous and wonderful people on the show tonight. Uh, this was a, a fantastic feat that uh, you did, Mr. Luckett. Number one, um, what, were, what were you wearing for this? I see that you had one door off, and it was at 18,000 feet. So what kind of clothing did you have on? A great deal of clothing. Parkas, sweaters, boots and heavy breeches. Uh, number two, uh, who was rescued first? Uh, John Day, the leader of the party, was taken out first. Uh, number three, do you agree with that? <clears throat> yes, John Day was taken out first. Uh, number... Tom Postman. 
I'm puzzling here. Uh, let's see, I, I think I'll start with number two. Could you tell us what is anoxia? Anoxia? It's uh, sickness from uh, lack of, of oxygen. Uh, thank you. Number one, uh, what is uh, an early sign of anoxia? Incoherence. And what uh, form does this kind of this behavior take? What does it uh, resemble? Loss of balance, inability to speak very distinctly. Thank you. Number three, how is a, a helicopter blade made? How is it made? Yes. Well, it's made similar to the blade of uh, a regular airplane in that it has a vertical pitch or can be turned in any direction. But, uh, Number Kitty? one, uh, you found a very difficult spot to land and a, probably one of the only spots in which you could have landed on Mount McKinley. Who gave you this information? Well, I've been flying this territory for a number of years. I knew the area. It's a conventional route for mountain climbers. Number two, was there no information given from the outside as to where to land this helicopter? Originally. Uh, nobody could have uh, given that information until the pilot had uh, seen it you himself. Do you agree with this, number three? Absolutely. Uh, number one, can you tell me how far apart the parties were? Two parties, about, uh, about 4,000 feet. From each other? That's right. Number two, did you rescue both parties? Uh, negative. Only one party was, uh, was endangered. Number, uh, uh, number two, how high up were you before you started to use oxygen? I actually uh, used oxygen from uh, the 10,200 foot level on up. That was the base camp. <clears throat> uh, number three, how many kinds of helicopters are there? Well, there are several different makers, if that's what you mean. That's what I'm talking about, makers. About how many? Oh, gosh, there are half a dozen. There's Hiller, the type I fly. Number uh, uh, one, why do some helicopters use two blades and others one? Well, the single-bladed helicopter is a counter-rotational operating machine. Uh, the other one actually does use two blades, both the vertical and a horizontal rotor. I guess that's all the time we have, as interesting as it is. I'd like to find out more myself. I can make up my mind. So it's time for you, without consultation, to vote once more and mark your ballot. Voting for number one, number two, or number three. I can't decide. I'll just do what I thought first. Okay, everyone voted. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one, Bud. I, I don't think I should have, but, but <laughs> that's just touting yourself off. I thought I should have at one time. I thought his answers were really very, very good. They were concise and full, but uh, maybe too full. Does that sound ridiculous? No, not at all. That's how I felt at the end. Kitty, which one do you think is well, the Well, that's exactly one? the way I felt, Tom. I felt that his answers were brilliant. They were all marvelous, but the, I just thought that number two was perhaps uh, the real one, and because number one's answers were a bit too full, although he certainly looks like a fellow who would make a dangerous rescue like that. Don, you're valid. I voted... <laughs> I voted for number one, and I, uh, I would like to say that I think this uh, exhibition here is a, an absolute tribute to Willie Stein, who coaches the liars on this show. Credit <laughs> <laughs> right to Willie Stein. Wow. <laughs> How can anyone tell who's who here? Imagine being listed as a liar coach. <laughs> the new type of distinction. Polly, your vote. Well, to prove how good they were, I had to resort to my old way of guessing. I voted for number three because of the way he pronounced his name. <laughs> the, your nurse had nothing to do with this one? No, I admit she tipped me off once in a while. <laughs> he was the only one that said Link Luckett. <laughs> All the others said Link Luckett. All right, let's find out which one of these links is the real Luckett, as we discover. <laughs> which one is the real hero helicopter pilot, and hero indeed he is. So will the real Link Luckett please stand up? Thank you, sir, and we certainly heartily congratulate you on your feet. It was a wonderful thing you did. Uh, number one, you tell us your real name and what you really do, please. You got the most votes. My name is Charles Herman. I'm a vice president of Wilmar International Corporation, Importers. Thank you, sir. I think it's only fair to see whether you have as much hair as number two, do you? <laughs> oh, you're much better. <laughs> 
<laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? You're real aim in what you do. My name is Bob Marcato, and I'm a radio and television announcer. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, we checked things over here, and we find there were uh, one, two, three incorrect votes this time at $250 each for a grand total of $750 from Camel Cigarettes and a carton of those fine camels on your way out. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Hope you had fun. We did. Good night, and good luck to you. Now, something short and sweet from our oldest sponsor, Helene Curtis. I'm afraid that's all the time we had. We all had fun, panel, so good night. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. Everyone. Bud Carter saying good night from Camel Cigarettes and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth, Mark Hudson, Bill Patrick, in association with the CBS Television Network. <laughs> to tell the truth, it's important to you.